Yesterday, I posted a video comparing the brand new 14-inch MacBook Pro to the brand new 16-inch MacBook Pro, comparing everything from the screen and the speakers and the performance to even the trackpads. But a number of people left comments asking about the thermal performance difference between these two laptops. So that's what we're gonna cover quickly in today's video. Hey, I'm Jerry. And yes, this is the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. And this is the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. Now, there are just a couple of slight differences between these two computers. For example, the 14-inch computer has 64 gigabytes of memory and a two terabyte SSD, and the 16-inch version has a one terabyte SSD and 32 gigabytes of memory. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. But because of the obvious size difference of these two computers, it's very probable that there's a thermal performance difference. So we're gonna run through four quick tests and run them each for about 10 minutes to try and see how they perform during those tests and what their temperatures look like. Okay, so for these tests, we're gonna be using two apps to monitor what we are doing. We're going to be using TG Pro to monitor the temperatures and the fan speeds. And we're gonna be using Apple's activity monitor to monitor the CPU and GPU along with memory pressure. Just to set the stage, these computers were rebooted about 30 minutes ago and have been sitting idle for about 20 minutes. The room temperature in here is about 68 degrees or about 20 degrees Celsius. So the first test we're gonna be using is Cinebench R23. And we've all seen this test before. We know what it is. We pretty much know what the M1 Max scores are going to be, but we're just going to check the thermal performance throughout this test. So we're just gonna start the multi-core test in three, two, one, go. All right. So as you can see, we're using very little CPU to start. That's gonna ramp up here pretty quickly. And then we'll be able to start seeing the temperatures rise a little bit. All right, so a little bit over one minute into the test, and we can already see that we're hitting upper 90s or mid 90s with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, whereas the 16 inch is still kind of hovering right around lower 80s. The 14 inch MacBook Pro is definitely heating up faster. And we can see that the fans on the 14 inch have actually turned on as well right now. We're just about a minute and a half into this and we're running 2300 RPMs and 2500 RPMs on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. The fans on the 16 inch have not turned on yet. All right, we're just shy of two and a half minutes in and the fans on the 16 inch MacBook Pro have finally turned on. They're a bit lower. They're sitting at 1500 and 1600 RPM. The fans are on the 14 inch are now at 3700 and 4000 RPM and they are noticeably audible. You can actually hear them from where I'm sitting. And I think they're getting even just a little bit louder now. The 10 minute timer has finished and it is finishing up its last iteration. So let's take a look at these numbers one more time. So the 14 inch right now, the fans are sitting around 4,100 and 4,500 RPM. They're slightly louder than they were before. And the max temperature that we have reached is 100 degrees Celsius. On the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the max temperature that has been reached was 96 degrees Celsius. But as you saw just a moment ago, all of the cores or more of the cores had actually heated up. If we check memory pressure just for fun, we see that there was zero memory pressure on the 14 inch and zero swap used. And for the 16 inch, same thing, very low. Okay, so with that thermal difference on these two machines during that test, did it actually matter in the test results? Well, the 14 inch got 12,262. The 16 inch got 12,285. So no, there was essentially no difference. Even though the 16 inch took longer to heat up, and kept a lower temperature throughout the test, there was essentially no difference in the test. The fan speeds do ramp up faster on the 14 inch MacBook Pro and they do get louder because they run at a higher RPM. So that's something to consider so far with that first test. So we'll give these computers just a couple of minutes to cool off and we'll start the next one. All right, so next up, we're gonna run the Unigen Heaven benchmark, although we're not gonna run the benchmark, we're just gonna let it run in a loop and see how it does over about 10 minutes. I already reset the maximum temperatures on TG Pro. So we should be able to start running in three, two, one, go. Okay, so we'll give that just a couple minutes to heat up and we'll see what happens. Okay, we're just over two and a half minutes into this test and I can hear the fans spinning up on the 14 inch model. So let's take a look. So right now for this test, we're getting low 70s, high 70s, and low 60s, low 60s. Okay, so it's kind of fluctuating around, but they're not too far off from each other. So let's take a look at the temperatures. So on the 14 inch, the fans are sitting around 4,000 RPM and 4,200 RPM. On the 16 inch, they're sitting at 1,500 and 1,600. Completely inaudible on the 16 inch, but the 14 inch you can definitely hear. So if we look at the max GPU temperature recorded so far on the 14 inch, it is 99 degrees Celsius. The max GPU temperature so far recorded on the 16 inch is 92 degrees Celsius. 
For the CPU on the 16 inch, so far, it has hit 92 degrees Celsius. And on the 14 inch so far, it has hit 99 degrees Celsius. So already a bit of a difference between the 14 inch and the 16 inch, just two and a half minutes in. All right, so we're coming up on the 10 minute mark for these two tests. So let's see how they're doing. On the 14 inch model, we're seeing around 68, 69, 65, and 67 frames over here. So performance wise, they're about the same. The 14 inch right now is showing 70s and the 16 inch is showing 60s and 70s. So basically the same performance on both of these machines. They're still pretty much in sync from when I started it. Fan wise, you can definitely hear it. The 14 inch is audible. You can hear it. It's louder than it was a couple minutes ago. It's sitting at 4,400 and 4,800 for RPM on the fans on the 14 inch. The 16 inch is sitting at 2,100 and 2,200 and you really can't hear it unless you pick up this laptop and hold it right next to your ear on the backside. You don't hear the fans at all. Maximum GPU temperature for the 14 inch hit a high of 99 degrees Celsius. Maximum GPU for the 16 inch temperature reached 92 degrees Celsius. And again, down here at the bottom, no memory pressure and no swap used. So the first test was Cinebench and that maxed out the CPU and used a little bit of GPU. The second test was the Heaven test and that maxed out the GPU with a little bit of CPU. So now we're gonna try Final Cut Pro and see if we can push both of those. So we're gonna start by resetting the max temperatures reported by TG Pro. And what we're gonna be doing is exporting this Final Cut Pro video. This is actually my video comparing the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pros from yesterday. However, I doubled it. And what I'm doing is I'm adding an adjustment layer and adding an additional filter on top of it. So throughout the whole video on both computers, I'm adding a high contrast uh, color preset, which should stress out the computers a little bit more. And these videos are 34 minutes long, which means that the export time should be above 10 minutes. So we should get a good idea of the thermal performance of these computers when running or exporting from Final Cut Pro. So the export settings on these guys is gonna be format computer, which is H.264 4K. And this is just gonna go back onto the local drive. And we'll start the two of these tests in three, two, one, go. All right, we'll check back in just a moment. So we're somewhere around 10 minutes in. We are just about to finish these tests. And still the temperature of the CPU and GPU is quite low. The maximum temperature reached on the 14 inch was 85 degrees Celsius. The maximum temperature reached on the 16 inch was 74 degrees Celsius. Looks like they're gonna complete at pretty much the exact same time. So there's really no difference in Final Cut Pro video exporting at least to H.264 between the 14 inch model and the 16 inch model, both running the M1 Max chip. And now that I think about it, that's probably expected with the built-in video encoders on the M1 Max and M1 Pro chips. The fans on the 14 inch never got up above 2,500 RPM, so you can't really hear them from a normal working distance. The fans on the 16 inch just barely turned on. We're talking 1,500 and 1,600 RPM. And next up, we're going to be running the Blender benchmark test using the classroom scene. And we're gonna reset these temperatures and start that up in three, two, one, go. And we'll give that just a minute to get kicking. Okay, and just about a minute in, you can already see that on the 14 inch, we've already hit over 100 degrees Celsius over here on the CPU temperature and the fans have just turned on. They are sitting at just 2,900 and 3,100 right now. No fans yet on the 16 inch, but we've only reached a max temperature of 90 degrees or 91 degrees so far on that 16 inch. We can see that more than a couple of cores are now in the red on the 14 inch, just over a minute into this test. GPU wise, they're just hovering around in the mid 70s uh, and low 70s on the 16 inch. All right, so we're about halfway through this Blender test on both computers. Both computers, they're both the 10 core CPU on the M1 Max and they're both completely pegged. Temperatures on both of these machines are kind of slowly rising with the mid to high 90s degrees Celsius on the 14 inch and kind of the low to mid 90s on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. We're about 10 minutes in and both of these tests are about to finish. Looks like at about the same time. The temperatures on the 14 inch have kind of hovered around the high 90s now, moved up, and then the temperature on the 16 inch was hovering around mid 90s. So both of these computers actually warmed up throughout the test with the 16 inch staying just a few degrees cooler than the 14 throughout the entire length. And you can see here the tests on the 14 inch came out to nine minutes and 52 seconds versus nine minutes and 50 seconds on the 16 inch. So pretty much indistinguishable 
performance-wise from each other. I also went ahead and ran the full suite of Blender tests, which took about 57 minutes, and both of them ended at basically at the same time. So even over a longer test, there was literally no difference. So what do these tests tell us? They tell us that these machines perform almost the exact same, at least in these four tests. There's really no difference in performance between these two chassis sizes with these tests, even though the 14 inch has 64 gigabytes of RAM and the 16 inch has 32 gigabytes of RAM. There's basically zero pressure on the memory on either of these during any of these tests. So if you're really just kind of wavering back and forth between 32 and 64 gigabytes, I think most people should be okay with the 32 gigabytes. Apple's done a good job of actually being able to offload some of the tasks that they see necessary, like for video encoding off of the main CPU and GPU, which kept the temperatures of both of these laptops down quite a bit because those specific tasks were offloaded. Now that's not going to apply to every single test or every single workload, but in some certain instances that will absolutely help. And so far after the first few days in my usage, the only time I ever hear a fan on either of these is when I do some kind of benchmarking like this with regular work, my work applications, browsing the web, email, all of that stuff. There's not a peep from either one of these laptops, but I guess that's it for me. If you have any questions about these M1 Max MacBook Pros or about the tests I did today, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see more videos on these MacBooks, definitely hit that subscribe button and come back. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it and I'll see you next time.